As a Grand Canyon local and interpretive guide, I get asked on a daily basis about those who die here. Though some are embarrassed to ask, most people secretly want to know. In the time I have spent living and working here, I have become accustomed to the fact that every year around 15 die. These may include overconfident professionals, unprepared hikers, suicides, accidental falls, and some who just disappear. The greatest loss of life at Grand Canyon occurred on June 30, 1956, when two airliners collided with each other over the Eastern Canyon. All 128 aboard perished, making it the worst civilian aviation accident at the time. The result of lax rules governing civil air traffic, the incident helped spur the creation of the FAA a couple of years later. The recovery effort was long and arduous, and because many victims could not be positively identified, mass graves were created, one of which lies at Grand Canyon Cemetery. It is here where the remains of 29 are buried. No less tragic are countless individual examples of how Grand Canyon has become the final resting place of hundreds of others, with many incidents taking place well into the 21st century. Around the time of early 2016, a California man was driving down Desert View Drive in eastern Grand Canyon. When he got to this area near Lippin Point, he turned off the road to plunge his car and himself into the canyon depths below. Remnants of the vehicle can be seen strewn about, as well as the car itself 1,000 feet below. Ironically, it is also here where nearly 50 years earlier, Osan Kane became the first known person to successfully commit suicide by driving a vehicle over the rim. Drive-offs like these have happened a dozen times over the last few decades. One of the most well-known occurrences to take place in recent years happened before horrified onlookers in Grand Canyon Village on June 13, 2009. I asked co-worker Gail, who was working that day, to describe more. It was a Monday morning. This gentleman had taken his car on the back side of Kachina Lodge and El Tabar. It's very easy to get up on the curb there. And there's an area of the stone wall that's not in place back there. And he drove right off and he was thrown from the car before the car actually hit. So they went down right away with the idea of a, a rescue. And when they got down there, they found out he was dead. He became a recovery. So usually it takes different equipment to pull him out. So they covered him up with the tarp and used some of the broken branches from the tree to camouflage the car. But if you went over to Lookout Studio on one of the patios, you could actually see it. Quite a few cars down in the canyon. Um, and they've been down there since the 60s. It's very, very expensive to get them out. And it's very, very dangerous for the pilot who flies the helicopter that's large enough to pull these cars out. The blue car that 57-year-old Georgie Shiriak used to drive over the rim behind Kachina and Thunderbird Lodges remained visible for a couple of years before finally being airlifted and removed from view. As dramatic as plummeting cars might sound, in June of 2004, perhaps even an otter suicide occurred. 
25-year-old Richard Clam from Illinois crawled out of a tour helicopter while flying over the canyon. This occurred before horror struck passengers and the pilot who tried to prevent him. Clam jumped, falling 4,000 feet to his death. Other suicides at Grand Canyon have involved less dramatic scenarios. A countless number of people have simply jumped off at any of the numerous lookouts. Some may have also chosen to hike into the canyon, never intending to return. Such may be the case of Drake Kramer, a 21-year-old geology student from Texas who was last seen checking out of Bright Angel Lodge in February 2015. Before disappearing, his last communication from Grand Canyon to his family was in the form of a curious text that said he needed to be back with Mother Earth. Despite an exhaustive search, Kramer was not found. There are others who have vanished at Grand Canyon, some whose remains will be found and others who will never be found. Perhaps the first recording missing persons cases occurred in 1869, when three members of John Powell's Grand Canyon expedition disappeared without trace. Today their fate remains a speculated mystery, as do modern cases that continue to take place here. Present vanishings, or confirmed fatalities, are sometimes the result of overconfidence and an underestimation of the Grand Canyon, even among seasoned outdoors types or athletes. In July 2004, Margaret Bradley, an athletic 24-year-old Boston Marathon runner, died from dehydration while trying to hike through the canyon. She and a companion attempted to do this during a dangerously hot time of year, proving that fatalities occur to those in groups just as much as they do solo hikers. Today her story is posted near the Bright Angel Trailhead as a warning to others not adhering to basic guidelines for hiking. In June 2015, 22-year-old raft guide Morgan Heimer disappeared after hiking away from the Colorado River and his group. One year later, with still no trace of Heimer's whereabouts, a 52-year-old avid hiker named Floyd Roberts also disappeared. Roberts, a high school teacher from Florida, was on a multi-day trek through a remote area near Grand Canyon's western end. He vanished after separating from his companions. Like all extensive searches for missing persons, those conducted for both Heimer and Roberts were eventually scaled back, with the reality being that not all who disappear can be found in such remote, rugged wilderness. Sometimes, human remains are found accidentally, as was the case with park staff conducting a rescue exercise below Pima Point in late July 2016. What they discovered were the remains of Diana Zacharias, who had vanished four months earlier. While some people do jump into the canyon with the intention of taking their lives, others simply fall from the rim to their deaths unintentionally. I remind every tourist in my charge that venturing to the edge is as safe or dangerous as one makes it. Despite these warnings, and tales of those who have recently died here, I am continually amazed by those who crawl over the edge to show off or to get pictures. In early July 2016, 35-year-old Colleen Burns from Florida was visiting Ua Point about a mile down the South Kaibab Trail. According to witnesses, Burns tripped over her own feet while at the crowded spot and fell 400 feet to her death. Just two weeks earlier, a 23-year-old man from California was visiting nearby Mather Point and fell several hundred feet to his death. Mather Point has the distinction of being the most visited spot at Grand Canyon, and it is here where one finds little adherence to safety. Lookouts like Mather have therefore been the scenes of many accidental, fatal falls. Brian, priority one, 